Hello, everybody. My name is Nilay Patel, and I'm the owner, designer, and educator here at Silver Silk and more. And I want to welcome you to the happy little place in my world, which is my channel. Um, here on this channel, it's my job to teach you guys fun and exciting projects using my product, Silver Silk and more, which is essentially a knitted wire jewelry chain. Um, I've got six different lines, seven different lines, and um, each of them are very unique types of chains that you can use for all sorts of amazing inspirational designs to elevate your jewelry, to add texture to something that would otherwise, I don't know, need it? Be bland? <laughs> um, I like to use it because I'm a mixed media kind of guy and um, I know a lot of the folks who still uh, who are new and follow Silver Silk, um, enjoy using it in their designs. We even have a community called the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group, which um, you can, of course, join if you would like to. There we post great um, inspirational photos of our designs and just to create this awesome little creative community where we inspire each other and keep each other motivated and um, learn new things, most importantly. So I'm excited about today's project because I'm going to teach you guys a component that you can make using one of the lines of my silver silk called pipe chain, which is essentially a hollow tubing that you can stuff things through. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just pan down. Actually, I'm going to show you a photo of the picture, uh, excuse me, <laughs> a photo of the design that we're going to be making today or the component rather. I'm not going to finish out the full design, but I'm going to basically show you a component that you will then just rinse and repeat from there. Okay, and then I'm gonna pan back down to my table and show you the piece in real life. So this is what I mean. We're gonna learn how to create this one singular component, which is fun. It's a very um, unusual shape and design and color way. But when you start to put a bunch of them together, it creates an amazing color design. Uh, I stopped at three, but you could certainly do this all the way around um, to create an amazing collar, uh, or in this case, just a focal centerpiece. I'm using a unique colorway called Periwinkle, which um, is a combination of baby blue knitted wire over a silicone light purple tubing. Um, it creates an unusual color combo that when you kind of squint, it creates a periwinkle color. And it just goes so perfect with these polymer clay he, she beads. And um, yeah, I guess one thing to note is where these beads actually did come from, as well as the chain, because this is um, a really great paperclip chain that has a seam on the ends of it. And these all came from the Jesse James beads. Strawberry Fields Mystery Box. Um, this one's for March 2024. And for those of you in the future that are watching this, I do apologize that they probably don't have this anymore. But um, I know that their boxes change up themes all the time and might include some similar materials. And certainly you can visit their site, jessejamesbeads.com, to find some of the similar materials, um, as you see here. Uh, and then you can grab the pipe chain from my store, silversilkonline.com. This is a specialty color using the same inspiration from the Jesse James Beads Mystery Box. And so you might not find this in the future as well. But if you leave a comment and let me know that you love this color and want to see it back, um, I definitely read them and will take that into account whenever I do another production run of some custom chains for them. So um, that's the design spiel in, in its entirety. And um, I'm going to set this aside and we'll focus on the singular component in which I want to go over the tools first. First, you'll need a pair of cutters, which look like this. This is for cutting not only the craft wire that we'll be using, but also the silver silk pipe chain. Um, you will also need a pair of round nose pliers, which look like this. Okay, this will be used for creating our round wire wrap loops. And finally, you will need a pair of chain nose pliers, which look like this. I like to use the um, companies called Wubbers. They're an amazing company. 
um, woman owned company, in fact, and um, rubberstools.com is where you can grab these tools from. And uh, they're super, super strong. I think that was what I was trying to say, <laughs> lost in my train of thoughts. Um, they're super strong, very durable. They've lasted forever for me. And um, yeah, they're, oh, they're also economical. I will say that very, very budget friendly while still being high end, which is one of my favorite things. Um, okay, so those are the tools. And then we've got uh, the materials for the actual component. One which I mentioned, which was the Hishi, um, Hishi beads from Strawberry Fields. This is what the packaging looks like. Okay, you get a full strand of, I think, 16 inches. Obviously, I used some here at the end to create my components. Um, but there's so much here to work with. Uh, you will need a small snippet of pipe chain. I'm using about two and a half inches of this stuff. So here's a close-up view. As you can see, it is a, it is hollow on the inside there, but it's a silicone tubing. Comes in a, a bunch of different colors. This one, um, since I'm switching up the palette here, I'm using a different custom color called Fresh Mint. Uh, which has a silver wire that's been machine knitted over it to perfection. So what's great about this stuff is that you can cut it and it won't fray um, and it will remain flexible even though it's wire. The knitting is just immaculate. It's so detailed and again just adds a very high-end touch to your design. While this is done in a silver wire, I'm going to be using copper wire to show you guys the component and how it's built. Um, but from there, you can decide if you want to use a different color wire with just depending on um, what type of pipe chain you're using and other beads and stuff to kind of develop your palette for, for this particular component. So I'm going to set that aside. And you will need two uh, little snippets of 20 gauge copper wire. Each of these are about, um, I would say about four inches, give or take. And I probably should straighten them with a pair of nylon jaw pliers just so I can have a nice straight wire. So allow me to do that real quick while we're here. I'm just gonna also use my Weber's nylon jaw pliers to straighten this out. There we go. And that's ready to craft with. Last uh, but not least, you will need a um, nine inch length of 26 gauge wire, also in copper. And if you're confused about which materials I'm using or needed a list, you can definitely check out the video description and there I've listed, um, I believe it's the materials for the full necklace and not just the component, even though we're just covering the component today. So um, those are the basis of how to put this together. Oh, one thing also that you'll need are some copper spacers, which look like this. Okay, these are about three millimeter. And normally for the component that I've created already, which is this here, um, here I used it at the ends. And you'll notice that I used a four millimeter bicone on the ends of my polymer clay hishi. Uh, I have actually ran out of those. <laughs> so I'm going to double up on the copper spacers and substitute those bicones with the copper spacers. As long as they're small four millimeter, three or four millimeter beads there at the ends, um, that's all that really matters because we're trying to taper the end to be able to accommodate the um, space we need for our simple loop that we're gonna be making, or the wire wrap loop that we're gonna be making. So I'm gonna set four of those aside. They're probably gonna roll around everywhere, so I'm gonna set them out here to the side as we do this. And to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this up to my actual component because I wanna cut this to size. So I just need to cut a little bit off. The trick with how much pipe chain to use for creating this, well, the thing is the answer is quite versatile. The longer you have this 
little snippet of pipe chain, the longer and well, I should say the bigger and deeper your half circle is going to be. I created just a delicate little arc here. And so I probably just need about two and a quarter inches of pipe chain. Um, so I'm just going to snip off this little bit here. As such, you might get a few of these little wire remnant pieces at the ends of your pipe chain after you've trimmed it. And all you do is you just kind of pluck those right off. I call them wire fuzzies. Um, it's just a fun term, but it just comes right off and it won't get in the way of any wire wrapping or whatever you plan to do. I believe that should be all right. Oh, one more here. Okay. Once you have gotten all that stuff off, this is pretty much conditioned and ready to use. So what I'm going to do is grab one of my 20 gauge pieces of wire, and I'm going to grab the 26 gauge wire, and I'm going to line them up to be exactly the same here. And the idea is to string them both through the pipe chain at the same time. Just like that. And I'm going to pull the smaller one all the way through until I have equal measured sides here. And then what I do is I just sort of bend them out of the way so that I'll be ready to use them here in a little bit. To each of these ends, I want to go ahead and create my wire wrap loops. And to do this, I'm going to go on this first one here and string a little copper spacer bead first. Then I'll grab my chain nose pliers, and I'm going to forward bend that little end of my wire into a 90 degree angle bend. Okay, I'm going to go in, this is going to slide around and that's perfectly okay. What you don't want it to do is completely slide right off. And so you can either um, put a little like bend in the wire at the end here, or you can use um, bead stoppers, which is also great for a craft wire. Okay, I'm going to grab the elbow of my 90 degree angle bend with my round nose pliers. And I'm just going to go ahead and bend that little end right toward me, switch sides on your pliers and fold it back around so that I've got this little piece of wire that's crossing over my circle loop here. If your loop isn't perfect, which mine's not, I'm going to actually just press it together and cheat a little bit to get it to look perfect. Um, and then I'm just gonna grab the whole thing and kind of just fold this wire around. It's copper wire, so it's relatively soft on my fingers. And I just want to do it once because I don't need a whole lot for this wrapping on this particular part. I will on the next part, but not this part. I just want it to be a secure loop. Okay, so just one to two wraps is good enough. And now I'll just scoot all of this down and I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. I was working with a very small scrap of wire there at the end. Uh, so if you feel more comfortable having more wire to work with as you're doing these loops, for me, I've done it so many times that it doesn't bother me at this point, but it might for you guys um, be uncomfortable. So just always cut a little extra wire because what's an inch or two, right? And in the terms of like waste, um, unless you're just really, really like conservative with your materials, <laughs> which on certain things I can be, but for wire, if, it, if I'm losing an inch, it's okay. Um, but you know, that might be a little bit of a, a struggle to wrap around unless you're really just got small dainty hands um, or you've got really fine tools to help you, which can also work. But you really just need to do this once like that, and then just trim it off. Everything should sort of butt up against those round copper beads. 
and um, you're pretty much ready to create the rest of the component. Now, if you're wanting to do this particular design, this, this component many times, um, I would probably recommend making all of these at once and then moving forward with the next step for this instead of making one component at a time. I think it'd just be a little easier that way to construct the whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that my loops face the same direction. And that's super, super important for this. So if you need to just kind of wiggle the loops around to make sure that they're facing in the same direction, go ahead and do that now. And with these little wire ends, because I've got about um, three inches there, I'm going to start to just loosely wrap this around the top part of my pipe chain until I get a nice bulky, messy nest-like wrapping happening. And the idea is to cover up the raw end of the pipe chain. I've actually got end caps that do cover it up. Uh, if you want to use those, you can. I like the wire trick because of the texture that it creates. And it's just a little more interesting to see, I think, with the final design because it's so minimalist. Um, but, you know, by all means, do, do what feels good for you. And, um, you know, I think this would look excellent with the end caps as well. Oops, I probably should do this on camera. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. With the additional end there, just go ahead and pinch that into the coil that you've made. If you need to trim it, if you have too much going on, you can also do that. What I do is I just do a little hook at the end and it kind of just folds right into the rest of it. Okay, now we've got this amazing little stick. This will make great for, I think, an earring too, if you wanted to hang some stuff down here at the bottom and just have a hook at the top. Um, but certainly we're not gonna stop there. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I have got my other 20 gauge piece of wire left over now. So the idea here is, is to string our beads on, and then we're going to carefully fold this into a half circle and string it on both sides to wrap up our design. So um, I'm going to grab some polymer clay beads here. Oh, there's one. And I think I double tied this. So give me just a second here to undo this. And what I want to do is string. Oh, I don't know. Probably about an inch and a half to start. I think I did an inch and a half here. So I'll just measure it up to this. Or what's better is I've got a caliper that I can use. This is an inch and a half. Yep. So yeah, you'll just measure out an inch and a half of the polymer clay beads as such. And you can probably do a loop on one side and then string the beads over the other or just use bead stoppers. Totally up to you. I've got a few bead stoppers here on my table that I can actually use to stop my beads from moving. So we'll do that for now. And so what I want to do is string on my copper bead in place of the bicone. And then I'm going to string on my pipe chain component that I made before I make the loop. So here we go. Um, grab my copper bead, string on my component. And we're going to do uh, the same sort of wire wrap loop here at the top. You could do a simple loop, and that would be perfectly fine, too. 
I think I just enjoy the security that I'll have with this particular wrapping for the wearing of this piece. Okay. Not a perfect loop, but I can smash it a little bit and get it rounder. Sometimes I like cheating the wire, <laughs> makes things a little easier. Okay, so I'll slide that down and you see how that just adds another ring of coil to my, to my simple loop there. It sort of fools the eye into thinking that the whole thing is wrapped when it really isn't, it's just layered on top of it. Um, and so that's, I think, the fun trickery of this design. All right, so before I do this other side, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and gently create my half circle with this, simply by just bending it. And then I can string on my copper bead, and I'm going to then string everything through that last loop. Uh, I will say my circle's a little deeper than, than I probably envisioned it to be. I could string on certainly more of these he-she beads and make this thing wider. And if I did less he-she beads, I would even have like a deeper semicircle. So there's a lot of versatility on how you create your shapes with this. Um, that's really up to what you are, I guess, designing on the fly of your own. Um, I know that this also works great, uh, works great as a bale if you're wanting to hang stuff off of um, the pipe chain here and doing something that's a little bit deeper with the semicircle would be really cool. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this as is because I'm kind of liking it. And same thing here, I'm just gonna grab my chain nose pliers, do a forward fold, grab my round nose pliers, grab the elbow, or armpit, I guess, whatever body part, you know, suits you. <laughs> uh, bend that wire back toward me and then go ahead and fold it back around and grab the loop all the way. And of course you'll just then twist your wire around a time or two until you have it nice and secure and you can just trim that right off. Once you've done that, go ahead and tuck in any part that's sticking out to make sure that it will not get in the way later. Okay, and then the very, very last thing to do is just to make sure that these loops face the same direction. And to do that, I'm gonna use both my pliers here, adjust it, and you have got your finished component and you can attach many of these together or you can just attach either silver silk or some jewelry chain right onto the ends of this and use it as a bail, like I said earlier. Um, so this, again, is just a very versatile, fun component to use for all kinds of crafting especially if you're into the mixed media as much as I am. And um, that's kind of what I wanted to teach you guys today. So I'm going to flip back around to my face. And I hope you guys enjoyed this class as much as I did teaching it to you. Um, you can check out this and lots more inspiration over on my YouTube channel, um, which is the handle of at Silver Silk and More. If you just search for at Silver Silk and More, um, in YouTube, you'll find me, as well as Instagram. Uh, I've got a quite a library of photos there that are just all sorts of different projects through time um, that I've put together with different lines of silver silk and a great resource to pull inspiration from. Um, last but not least is the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group, which is a amazing community of creative individuals that have pulled together to um, I don't know, just to have all good silver silk vibes. <laughs> I 
I love our little community. I love um, all the projects that we've shared there together and just the fun vibes that, I don't know, just help me kind of, uh, and many others, I think, escape into the craft world uh, for a little while from their daily lives. So I really appreciate it and I hope you'll come join me there. And uh, until next time, I hope you stay creative and have a wonderful day and I will see you again.